So welcome, Dr. Dahl, thank and you. thank you again for attending. I'm excited to be here. Uh, it's always wonderful to have a good crowd, too. Whenever we go out of our way to, you know, come to a group like this and lots of people show up, it's fun. It, gets, it makes me more energized, so hopefully you'll stay energized with me. So I, I'm a lipidologist. Many of you probably don't even know what that is. In fact, many physicians, because it is actually a new field, haven't heard of lipidology as a specialty. So my training actually initially was in primary care medicine, and I ran a full-time primary care practice here in Waukesha. You may have even seen some of you as patients. And then I uh, transitioned my practice full-time into lipidology, which is basically a specialty that addresses heart disease, stroke prevention. And the area of expertise is really in the understanding of cholesterol, lipoprotein metabolism, metabolic disorders, management of metabolic problems that cause people to have difficulty losing weight, that sorts, those sorts of things. So that's what a lipidologist is. Uh, today what I'm going to try to do is give you a lot of pearls, just something that you could, so you can be thinking about what do I need to know to make sure that I'm living my life as healthy as possible, and what do I need to know to make sure that I don't have a heart attack or a stroke. Heart disease is the number one cause of death in our world, so we should all be thinking about it. We are absolutely, every single one of us, at risk for cardiovascular disease. So we're gonna talk about how we might be armed with more information to be able to prevent this from happening. So I say it's the number one cause of death and that sounds somewhat depressing, so we just go home and say, oh great, I'm gonna have a heart attack at some point. Or my cholesterol's awful, I just might as well eat whatever I want because there's nothing I can do. That's not true. What's exciting about this, and I think what makes me so driven in this, in this field in particular, is that as soon as we identify what puts you at risk, we can absolutely fix it. We can totally prevent cardiovascular disease from happening. And that's powerful. I mean, if we can prevent something, if we can identify risk and then do something about it, that's exciting. Because we can completely trump genetics. So if you have a family history that's bad, everyone has heart attacks, or everybody has a stroke, or everybody gets diabetes, or has difficulty with weight as they get older, if we can identify what it is genetically that's producing that, we can do something about it, and that doesn't have to be you. So that's, that's really powerful stuff. It's different when you can do a test to detect risk for cancer, for example, and then you basically just sit there and hope you don't get it, but don't necessarily have anything you can actively do to prevent that other, other than you know, living a healthy lifestyle, certainly. But with this, there's really a lot of things we can do to fix it, so that's exciting. And we'll talk a little bit today about you know, how to identify our risk, how to understand and interpret lipid profiles and cholesterol, things that you, you may have done by your doctors. <laughs> also talk about really some of the newer things that can be done to identify risk for cardiovascular disease and for diabetes that you may not have had done and that is available to you. It's really important to know that. Then we'll talk some about some of the treatments that we have available and hopefully answer a lot of your questions. I think there's a lot of confusion, a lot of confusion and fear about treatments when it comes to medications, for example, to treat cholesterol. There's a lot of fear out there about what is that all about and am I gonna get side effects and what is this doing to me down the road? We're gonna talk about those things. I want you to walk away from here without fear and I want your questions to be answered. And so if you have random questions about how much vitamin D should I take or what, how many of us should be on fish oil, we're gonna talk about that, okay? And we'll hopefully have lots of times for questions in the end. 